Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Adrian Ross Show, the basketball edition. Listen, if you've not subscribed to the channel, please do so. Always, always appreciate it. Now, for the topic of the moment. Someone sent me a video, and I know that there are other people who have seen it also or seen something about it because I've seen some titles concerning it, although I haven't watched other footage, other people's commentary on it. But I want to give you a little bit of my commentary. You're going, what is it, Adrian? Tell us. Okay. <laughs> what I'm what I'm telling you, what I'm getting to is about the WNBA, Caitlin Clark, and of all people, Elon Musk. So this gentleman who is a former coach in the hockey world. He's an entrepreneur now, successful businessman, and a huge fan of Caitlin Clark, did a video in which he said that Elon Musk should step up and create another basketball league here in the United States. I want to show you a little bit of what he said, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to chime in on what he said. Check it out. On your lap. Who could take this incredible gift from God and actually maximize it? And then I thought to myself, well, who's got the brass balls? Who's got the money? Who's got the reach? And who's got the intelligence to start their own league? Because there's no hope for her in this league. And anybody that says, well, you know, she should go play in Europe. Who the f wants to go play women's basketball in Europe? I mean... Caitlin Clark is a proud American. She wants to live in America. Who doesn't? Um, and she wants to play in the greatest league in the world against the best players. Well, that ain't the WNBA. That, like I said, this is this isn't a basketball league. This is a virtue signaling league. This is a everything but. And she was punished this year. She's not making any money in the league as a player anyway. She's making less than eighty grand. Her money is endorsements. And those endorsements go with her no matter where she plays. So she needs a new place to play. And the WNBA ain't it. So depending upon her contract and how soon she can get the hell out of there, um, it's, it's like, you know what? Now's the time for a guy like Elon Musk, the greatest entrepreneur of our lifetime. He's the P.T. Barnum. I call Musk the P.T. Barnum of our lifetime. The guy's building electric cars. He's he's send, he's building rockets. He's sending uh, you know he's sending uh, rockets to Mars. I mean, this is the guy that you need to start a brand new league uh, to compete and to totally destroy the WNBA. And who needs more content and entertainment than Musk? He owns X. He owns the former Twitter and. It's interesting because I too had been thinking, what if Caitlin Clark started her own league? I had not considered the idea of an Elon Musk starting another league for Caitlin Clark, but he feels adamant. And that's just a little bit. But when you listen to the whole thing, you know, he feels adamant that mm, he would probably say the league doesn't deserve Caitlin Clark. He would say that this first season that she's been in the league has just revealed that if he were her father or her agent, he would have her up and out of there. And as far as going overseas, well, you know, who wants to have to do that? And so he believes that Elon Musk is that guy who would, who would step up, who has uh, the capital to do it, who has the platform to do it, who has the interest in sports enough to do it and is decent enough to do it to remove Caitlin from the WNBA and start another league. And you know what? You guys have heard me say it before that as much as I didn't want to feel that way, I found myself thinking, man, Caitlin Clark, get your mess up out of here and go overseas. Right. And then I said, you know, yeah, that sounds, that sounds great when you consider how some of the players in the league treated her this season and, and, and just the culture and the DNA of the league itself sounds great. But then I said, listen, we got to be honest. Caitlin Clark wants to play in the WNBA. 
this has been her dream all of her life. And even though I'm sure one day when she woke up, she thought, what in the world did I get myself into? She had to have been thinking that at the beginning. What about this idea of another league? Well, we already know that there's the unrivaled three-on-three -three league, and she doesn't want anything to do with that. Although now they said that they're going to turn up the pressure. They're going to put on the full court press. They're going to do what they have to do to get Caitlin Clark in, in the league. Uh, maybe we'll talk about that uh, at another time. But for now, yes, there's unrivaled starting in January. What about a whole different league and pulling some of the best players into that league? Well, would Caitlin Clark go for that? I personally don't think she would. I don't think she would because, again, all of her life, it was her dream to play in the WNBA, the league that's considered to be the best league in the whole world, the best players in the whole world, and now she's achieved that dream. I don't see her saying, you know, I'm going to play with this other experimental league. I just don't see it. You may disagree. Just as I don't see her going overseas, although this is different from going overseas, if that were to happen, I, I don't see that Caitlin would jump into that. The other reason is that I don't know that I don't know that she would want to be a part of taking down the WNBA. I don't know if she wants that on her resume, so to speak. Because here's the thing, if you're going to, if Elon Musk is going to do this, if he's going to create this league, if he were ever interested in doing that, he's going to want to pull the best of the best. And wherever Caitlin goes, the attention is going to go. The sponsorships are going to be there for other players who enter that league. The spotlight's going to be on them like never before. It's going to be a thing. And I don't see two leagues being able to coexist, which I believe that that gentleman was is saying as well. I don't believe it would be like, oh, it's a rival league, like unrivaled is for the three on three. I don't, I don't see that. I don't see being able to to coexist because the eyes are going to follow Caitlin Clark. It's that simple. The money is going to follow Caitlin Clark. The endorsements will follow Caitlin Clark and those people who are attached to her are going to benefit. Why do you think now they want to put on that full court press and, and get Caitlin Clark? We're going to get her into the league. We're going to make sure she gets into the league and get her to play with some of these people who tried to knock her to the floor or did knock her to the floor. Why? Because they recognize that they need Caitlin Clark to thrive. So I don't think that Caitlin would want to be the person who helped to tear down this WNBA she grew up loving, desiring to play in, which has some, some really uh, cool people in the league in spite of the whole other stuff and, the, and all that. I just don't think she'd want to do that because I think she's smart enough to know that if she got into that, mm, it would, it would, it would, mm, it would do some stuff. Does she want to do that? Does she really want to walk away from uh, the toxic culture enough to want to be a part of something like that. I don't know that that's the case. And then there's this, you're not going to build the league overnight. So let's just say best case scenario, it takes a year to get this league moving, get this league going, get the players in, get whatever, whatever the creators have to do to do this stuff. I don't, I'm not, I don't do this stuff, right? I don't know, but we know you're not going to do this overnight. So then what do you do? Let's say it takes a year. Does Caitlin continue to play in the WNBA with some of these other players who know? Because you can't keep it hush-hush. You got to let people know, right? You're trying to build other people, bringing them in. You want to build a fan base. You got to have arenas. You got to have you got to have a whole lot of stuff. Officials, all this stuff. Coaches, all that. Okay? So she's going to continue to play with these players in this league? Even if, I don't even know all the contract stuff. I'm just talking about it because this was brought out and I hear other people now are talking about, I didn't watch what they said, but I, I noticed titles and things like that. So I know it's a thing. And I know there are people who are like, yo, Elon, you should get on that. But is she going to go then play with these players who are already jealous of her, many of them, 
who already don't appreciate that she entered the League of Millionaire while they're trying to pay their rent. And some of them don't even have $8,000 rent like Angel Reese let us know she has. I just thought I'd throw that in there. But they're talking about not making enough money. They're talking about not enough eyeballs. They're talking about it's not just about Caitlyn. It's about us. It's not just one team. It's also us. They're talking about all that. And now she's going to play with these players. They're already trying to take her down, some of them. So is she going to play with them for that year? Or does she back out if her contract allows and then play overseas then for a while or just practice on her own or what? But does she want to suit up and go out there and play with people who are not going to like this move? I don't know. I don't even know it's possible. It sounds rather cool if it were possible, but I just don't know that she would she would do that. And how would you handle all that in-between stuff that goes on? Now, hmm, from Elon Musk's perspective, if he said, listen, this is something I want to do, well, let me rephrase that. Would he even say, this is something I want to do? It's, you know, he's a bold guy. He he bought out Twitter. He said he's committed to free speech. He got a lot of enemies as a result, but he's not unaccustomed to making bold moves. This would be a bold move. I will say this. If Elon Musk is willing to do this to buck the machine, so to speak, the establishment, that he needs to go deep. I don't see him doing this with the same old sports media. That's part of the machine. That's part of the establishment. Those are the people that have run with a certain narrative throughout this entire season. So if you're gonna go in, Elon, or, or some other business person who may wanna take it on, but we're, we're focusing on Elon. So I would say to Elon, if you're gonna go in, if you're gonna buck the system, then go deep. Then get yourself some people like myself, yeah, like other people you hear out there who have been covering this stuff, who've been calling stuff out, who've been, as they say, keeping it a buck, where Caitlin Clark is concerned, where some of these false narratives are concerned. You you guys know who some of them are. You know, I you got Ben, the Ben Daniel podcast where he calls a spade a spade. You've got the Pope B. Frank, where he keeps it frank of recently uh, encountered uh, come on now podcast, uh, Rudy, the Rudy rant, right? I don't agree with everything that these guys put out there. And I do kind of push back on the language because I like to keep the language decent, not Sunday school necessarily, but decent. But when I look at content, I'm talking about people I've, I've tuned into who are, who are keeping it real, who are not afraid to take the, the, the darts and the arrows that do come our way because we're willing to keep it real. So I'm thinking, if you're going to go something like this and veer away from the establishment and do your own thing, then come on in there with some folks like myself and like some of these other people I mentioned who are going to call it like it is, who are going to be real, who are going to be frank, right? Who are not afraid to go on that rant and speak the truth. Again, I don't agree with these guys on every single thing, but these are some people I've seen out there who are consistently bringing content and not trying to do clickbait and stuff. Cause there's that too. I don't, they're not clickbait ish. They just, they're just out here reporting and they're trying to hold people's feet to the fire. So I would say go bold, get some, some coaches in there who are, who are not, not necessarily never coach the WNBA, whatever, but you got to vet this stuff really seriously and, and, and create a culture that is vastly different from what we are currently seeing in the WNBA. Because if you're not going to do that, don't even bother because then the problem is just going to follow you. So I say, Elon, if you're in, go in, go all the way in and bring people like myself and other people in there to keep it a buck because you're going against the machine. The WNBA is backed by the NBA and it's sort of a machine. It's sort of like when I always talk about the DNA, the culture of the league is a machine. The woke nature of the WNBA is a machine. A lot of people don't like when you talk about the woke, but it is what it is. It exists and it's there. It's, it's through the fiber of this league. It's an activist league and they'll let you know. So if you're a fan and you try to deny it, you might as well stop because they're not. And so he'd have to be willing to take that on, which again, he's a bold kind of guy. Maybe he is.
I'm not sure though if he, along with many other people, are sold on the idea of women's basketball. I don't know that he isn't, but are we prepared to do something so bold or is he prepared to do something so bold when up until five minutes ago, a lot of people weren't even tuning in to watch at all? Does he Is he able with his business sense to say, I see a moment here and I can capitalize it? I don't know. Elon Musk, Musk may very, Elon, I said Elon Musk. Maybe, maybe that was a Freudian slip. Elon Musk do this. No, Elon Musk would be really kind of an ideal situation. But I don't know that he would do it. I don't think Caitlin would get on board. What do you guys think? I'm just throwing it out there because when I listen to the whole video, I'll put the link. I will put the link in the description. But when I look at the video, you know, he's got some really colorful language I don't care for, but his his mind is kind of interesting. Hmm. What do you think? I feel like I got a shadow. There's a shadow. Sun is setting. And so I'm seeing shadows in front of me. So forgive me. I'm moving away from them. But in any case, you can tell us what you think in the comments. I'll catch you next time, God willing. God bless you abundantly.